welcome to another guide to with me Mr. Sealy P. I'm here on Estancia Lapacho for a bit of a sugarcane 101 video. I'm trying I'm gonna try at least to get it all in from seed to harvest all in this episode. It might be slightly longer than my usual guide twos because there's a lot to fit in. This being a South American map and part of the new platinum expansion pack DLC. There are a lot of new vehicles, a lot of new machinery, and sugarcane is the new crop. So, starting off, we will look at seeding. Um, sugarcane, here's another one of my interestingly enough facts. Um, sugarcane is driven by the worldwide need for sugar at the end of the day. 80% of the world's sugar comes from sugarcane. Another 20%, roughly thereabouts, comes from sugar beet, which I didn't know. Um, and sugarcane is produced mostly in subtropical countries, um, Australia, lots of South American countries. I mean, there are loads of world uh, countries all around the world where they do produce it, but we are at present in a South American country. I'm going to start off looking at the seeding side of things. There are three different ways to get seed into your seeders on Farming Simulator 17 Platinum Edition. We have, I'll have a look in the store, under sugarcane harvesting, we have got three different seeders or planters. There is the Gessner single row billet planter, the TT8022 driveless, and then the Gessner two row billet planter. Gessner is an Australian company um, in, from Queensland, and TT is Doble TT, and that is a company from Argentina. I believe. Um, so obviously countries that are producing um, sugarcane. Billets are the parts of sugarcane. Sugarcane in essence is a grass, oddly enough, um, and it grows a bit like a bamboo, very very thick. When that's harvested with a chopping harvester, it chops it into chunks. Those chunks are called billets. So when it's seeded into the ground, you're putting billets back into the ground, parts of the sugarcane plant, which then regrow. So that's why they're called billet planters, because you're putting billets back into the ground. So we have got these three, the prices, I'm, I'm not going to go into great depth on the prices of the vehicles, those kind of things. This is more about sugarcane itself, how we're going to sow it, plant it, how we're going to harvest it, and what machines you can use to do that. So this one here is the Gessner single row billet planter. And then over here, we've got the Gessner double row planter as you can see it's twice as wide and there's two kind of troughs inside there with a bit in the, in the center there and then over here we've got the drive less and the drive less I believe is a single row I think from here and what they do when they plant is they open the ground up they put the billets in and they close the ground back up over the billets to help them to have the best chance possible for growing right let me just go and grab the Massey Ferguson the single row one here needs some seed in it, so we'll jump into the Massey Ferguson. On the front we have got pallets. 
in the store under the pallet section you can get um, sugarcane pallets when you start off on this map there are four of these under this little uh, kind of shed gazebo type affair and as with most pallets fertilizer seed those kind of things if I lift that up and over the top we should as we go over hmm now I thought there was going to be one of those ones like the others where they just tip in but I think it might be a bit more like the uh, where are we? Let's drop that down. Oh, I've just realised why. Let's move that out of the way. It's like the pallets of um, saplings, I think. So what I'll do is jump out of there, jump into here, and hopefully I should. Right, by pressing L3 on the PlayStation controller, that is now taking from the pallet into the cedar. There we go. So it wasn't a tip one. I was thinking of fertiliser, but it's not. It works like the saplings do um, those kind of pallets. So you can put the pallets in the ground, go up close to it, press L3, and it will fill up from the pallets. That was a rather long-winded way of getting to that point, wasn't it? Um, the second option we have, and I'll just grab this tractor. Lift that up a minute. We'll grab the drive less. The second way is if you've got seed or fertiliser points on the map, so if you've placed them yourself, we can fill up the seed and the fertiliser, hopefully, from this one. Not close enough. Okay, so that's filling up seed. The triggers on these can be a little bit finicky, not horrendously so, but slightly harder to get to. I don't need to fill up completely. And hopefully if I go then back to the fertilizer, I can then put fertilizer in as well. So these will seed and fertilize, which is pretty handy. It does both those steps at once. And then the last option, so you've got pallets or from a seed of fertiliser point. And the last option, if I just drop that off there, is by bucket. Pretty much like you can with the potatoes and the sugar bee, you can use a previous crop because, in essence, the seed is the billets from the last crop. It's just bits that have already been harvested. We should be able to, hopefully, Fill that bucket up. And then fill up from a previous crop. Now because of the yields you get, and they are quite high yields, I have to say, it's that sort of crop that because you don't get a lot of money for it, or it's actually the other way around, because of the amount of crop you get, the price is low. Um, because there's such a huge amount of it, the price is low. Um, but you do get a lot of it. There was another interesting thing about sugar beet, which we'll get around to in a little bit. But I can keep doing that, filling this up. With a bucket, with a front loader, with a wheel loader, anything you particularly fancy. Or from a seed refill point, or from the sugar cane pallets. Those are the three ways of filling up your billet planters. So that's filling them up. Then we get on to actual seeding itself. These have a front set of wheels for when you drop it off. When you pick it up and put it onto the three point, those lift up. Just drop it off now. It goes up onto that, well, it's supposed to go onto those jockey wheels. Um, and it rests on these ones at the back, which when you turn, they aren't powered, they can't steer, they are just jockey wheels. 
to keep it supported and off the ground. If I line this up now, this is the double row billet planter. So, let's turn that on. And there we go, so our rows begin. It's taken from both sides. It's kind of like it's a wash plant, I think it is. Um, puts them in the ground, so it opens the ground up from the front, places them in, ground close up behind it, and you've got your two rows planted. That, in essence, is planting. There's not a lot else to it. The other two are single row billet planters with slightly different capacities and different prices, obviously. Um, some of these fields on this map are huge and will take quite a while. They will also take quite a bit of seed to plant, but that's not too much of a problem. If you start thinking that's going to cost me a fortune um, in seed, if you can use some from a previous crop, that's great, but your first one, you're probably going to need to do it from pallets or from a seed refill point. It can seem quite expensive. However, the sugarcane has a trick up its sleeve. When you harvest it, it will regrow. Um, in real life, it does exactly that. Some parts of the world, they will allow it to regrow three, four, five, up to ten times before they then clear it all and replant. Now obviously each yield will be less and in some countries the yields are actually quite high, they remain quite high until you start getting into the later kind of crops. So in this you get three, pretty much like you have to do when you have to replow. If you plant sugarcane you'll get three crops out of this, three complete cycles as far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's three cycles, then you have to replow or recultivate and then reseed. So that's actually not too bad when you think of the size of, or the amount you get in each yield, three crops worth for one lot of seed, that's actually not too bad. I say it's quite light labour intensive, once you set a worker off you can go and do something else. It's not like you put them in here by hand. Um, so that actually works out quite well. That is the seeding side of things, how to fill the seeders and how to actually do the seeding is quite straightforward. It's like most other seeders, once you set a worker off, off you go. Doing it yourself, of course it's possible. Your lines probably won't be as straight, you might get a bit of wobble here and there, but that's not the end of the world. Um, but that is seeding. I'm going to jump out of here, leave him to carry on. Like I say, this is not an in-depth guide to of each particular piece of machinery. This is more about the overall idea of sugarcane, how it works, what you do. There are lots of new bits of equipment. Um, so that's seeding. The actual growing takes quite a while. I think, again, I think from what I've done already, it takes three days. I think it's three day cycles to fully grow. Um, but it doesn't wither either even if you've got plant withering on I think it doesn't wither so you can leave it as long as you want to and you can come and and harvest it whenever you want to so moving from the seeding the growing phase takes quite a while but then we move on to the actual harvesting harvesting requires putting them into trailers these little beauties are the new sugarcane trailers I've already got some out there uh, the two smaller ones, we will have a quick look in store at those. So if we have a look in sugarcane harvesting, we have got the lizard Canna, it's Canna Trans or Cana Trans, I'm not too sure, 600, that has a capacity of 12,000 litres. These can be hooked up and daisy chained, which can be a lot easier if you don't want to be spending out lots of money on the bigger ones straight off the bat. You might start off buying a couple of small ones and then build up from there, but, you know, Horses for courses, whatever you feel like doing. Then we move on to the slightly large one, 20,000 litres. That's the Doble TT Colossus 10,000. And then we've got the larger 28,000 litre Massey Ferguson 3012. These are nice little bits of machinery. They've got some nice little 
touches if you haven't seen one already or used one already how they operate and what they do is quite interesting and different and well worth a look at actually we'll go back into there because that's what you put your sugarcane into what you actually harvest with are these two machines we have the lizard SWT7 that's 100 horsepower that needs and that is a toad harvester it's only got a one meter width head on it so it's obviously going to be a lot slower like most of the other toad forage harvesters and things in the standard game that's going to be a much slower way of doing it but it's a much cheaper introduction into doing harvesting plus when you start the game you get one of those already the next one up is this bad boy this is the case IHA8800 multi row this has got a working width of two meters which when you think about it it's only double the width um, 358 horsepower but it's 349,000 you can have it with a trailer hitch on the back which adds another 800 pounds dollars euros whatever you're using interestingly though it's proving difficult to find trailers that actually hook up to it which you would think well surely if this is all part of the new pack wouldn't you just hook some of these up these seem to hook up to the trailed one fine but don't actually hook up to the case one so then I thought okay what about bigger trailers these are Randon trailers Randon is a Brazilian company that makes been making trailers since the 1940s I believe um, so I thought okay well you've got one that has got a lorry um, fifth wheel attachment and one which is a trailed one with the uh, A-frame attachment just attach the A-frame to it unfortunately the back of the harvester is comes over the top and is too close it won't actually hook up so that's proving interesting without spending probably a few hours of going through every option of every trailer until you find one which if you've got the time crack on um, I'm sure there are different people out there will comment and say they've already found which particular trailers do work with that so what I'm going to do is jump into the Challenger we we'll hook up to Massey Ferguson trailers I've got two daisy chained the uh, TT Colossus 10,000s they all work exactly the same way they're just different sizes slightly different designs slightly different shapes I haven't left myself much room here so I'll go around the outside the two smaller ones the lizard ones I've already taken over and they are attached to the trailed harvester so what we're going to do is have a look at a bit of harvesting So as you can see, the smaller ones are just here. That is the trailed harvester. Let me just stop there. So these are the lizard. Um, it probably says on there the Cana Trans Cana Trans 600s. Again, got two of those hooked together, and obviously you can hook, I suppose, as many as it will work on. I don't know how well this will throw these into the back. It might just do one at a time. That I haven't actually tried yet. But this is the trailed one. This is the lizard SWT7. And it's got a trailer hitch. Brilliantly, I've put it just in the bushes there, so you can't actually see. There you go, there's the trailer hitch, which will hook up to there. Um, this is the arm, the pipe, and it will all come out of there into the trailer. You can set a worker to do that with the trailers on, or you can set a worker on this, and you can run alongside it with a tractor and these trailers attached to the tractor. I will show you this version first first I think we need to unfold hook up try and line up as best I can without going over the crop let's turn that on Because I've hired a worker at the moment, it's not destroying the crop as it goes through, but it's pulling those trailers through. And you can see by the height, height of the sugar cane, what's happening is this front piece here, as I zoom right in, this front little doodad, um, that's topping, that's taking all the tops off. 
then the section behind is actually then cutting the stalks, goes in through the machine, chops them up into billets, and then the billets fall out the back here into the trailer. Now, as you can see, all the bits it doesn't need to go flying off wherever they want to land. Um, and once I've harvested this entire field, I can then leave it and it will regrow again. I haven't yet harvested the entire field and worked out whether or not, we'll see that in a moment actually, whether or not it will need re-fertilising. I'm assuming it would do. It would need to have at least one fertilising spray on, unless you've got three states on, in which case it will probably need three. So that, hopefully, let's see if this turns around all right. This is where the tractor disappears into the crop and it's never seen again. So, there goes the tractor. will emerge at the other end at some time fairly soon but that's harvesting with the trailed harvester it's actually quite straightforward um, what I can do like I say is I can set that off and run alongside it which I will do it says in a moment I'll let it get to the end and then we'll go and grab another tractor and we'll show you the other way of doing it it's pretty much like the sugar beet harvesting, any of the other ones. You can harvest and run alongside it. There we go. So, I'll turn that off of a worker. I will disconnect from there. Get my harvester lined back up again. So, set my worker, then I shall jump into the uh, Challenger. Slightly overkill for these size trailers, but never mind. to this trailer just there and off it goes so the harvester will harvest I can run alongside the beauty of doing it this way rather than the other way I mean it's, again it's what suits you best if you want to leave a work and just chug it away and you come back to it to unload every now and again doing it the previous way works better if you want to use multiple trailers doing this way works quite well because once that's full I can just pull forward a little bit further and then start on with the next one. So I could have multiple um, trailers hooked up to do that. But there we go, that's it running alongside. <coughs> that will do exactly what I need it to. Now what's interesting about these trailers, if you haven't seen one already, I've got it set on the front one, unloading isn't usual grain door, tip to the side, tip to the back kind of thing. These do this. Loads of great animations and stuff going on there. So they go up and down, so they can tip into a high-sided trailer, um, semi-trailer, the random trailers, which we just had a quick look at as we went past those orange trailers. What they can also do is tip that way, so they'll go up and then they'll tip. You can tip from here, if you've got a lower trailer, you can go up and then tip. These will tip onto the ground, they'll tip into a trailer. I think they will tip into another one of these trailers, if you particularly wanted to. If you're just moving them trailer to trailer to trailer, I'm not quite sure why you would do that, but they can do 
So what I will do very quickly is just move that out of the way. So as you saw earlier, what you can do, if you want to, is just tip. And you can tip onto the ground, into a barn, into a bunker. Now that's going to come up a little bit, I think. All of it. There we go. So I've tipped onto the ground on that one. Let's disconnect that. I'm going to get the Massey Ferguson's and we'll look at the case IH. For all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. It's an identical harvester. It does the same job. It's just bigger, wider width, gets through it quicker, and it's just quite a fancy piece of equipment to be looking at. Let's just turn that off. So, like I say, that's the trail one. It's done it no problem at all. It leaves all of that on the floor, so all your kind of bits that have been chopped and thrown everywhere, that's the te texture it leaves behind. Sometimes it leaves an orangey patch either end. Regardless, it will still regrow. You don't have to worry anything at all about that. That will regrow a second time and then a third time that you need to replant. So, we're going to get the Massive Ferguson trailers. Now, interestingly, another interesting, here you go, another fact. Um, Sugarcane is also grown and harvested in parts of America. Texas, Louisiana, uh, there was somewhere else I read about, I can't remember what the third one was. I apologise if your state does do sugarcane. Um, but they do have an issue. A lot of those states don't do billeted. They are moving towards billeted or already have moved towards billeted. But they, the other way of doing it is by um, putting into the ground the full cane. Um, because what happens with billets, when it gets wet, if when you seed them, put them into the ground, if you have a cold snap or it rains a lot, they can get waterlogged. If they get waterlogged, they rot. So you end up with um, stalk rot, I believe it's called. And they rot away in the ground, which means you lose... I think it's called a stand. You lose a big chunk of your stand, um, which isn't good for obvious reasons. Um, you want as much of your crop as you can possibly get. And I did read an article about the, um, I think it was the University, Louisiana State University Agricultural Department, plus the USDA are working on trying to find different fertilizers, fungicides, um, all different ways of adjusting it um, and trying to make it better because with the advances in harvesting technology and a lot of the harvesters being chopping harvesters um, they want to be able to put billets in the ground because it's much much easier to do without those billets then rotting so yeah interesting little you know a bit on the side for you there let's again let's get a work on this Slightly. Hire a worker, the pipe comes out the back. Like I say, it's a wider cut at the front. The header, the topper, still does the topping. It still draws it in the bottom, the blade's cut, it chops inside, through the machinery, up, out of here. That's most of that you don't even really take the time to look at. You know, it's a pity because it's. <laughs> right, let's jump into here and let's see if we can run alongside without getting too close. I think it's because the uh, the tractor is quite a wide one. But there we go. So the case IH A8800. You'll do it twice as fast. Obviously the header or the width of the cutter is two metres as opposed to one. Um, you've got to ask yourself, for doing it in half the time, does it warrant the price tag? Um, I don't know, you know, starting off, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a 
cool bit of machinery. Um, looks like a very strange sort of scorpion type thing. Um, it's a brilliant bit of machinery. I just don't know. I think once a trailer has been isolated, located, identified, whatever word you want to use, um, that will hook onto the trailer hitch on the back of the case IH. You can see the trailer hitch just down the bottom. Um, once that's been done, setting the worker off to get on with that, that will actually save you a huge amount of time. It really, really will. In essence, then this is the same process. Come back around again, and we carry on, up and down. Obviously multiplayer, this would work incredibly well. No different to any of the other harvesting in the standard game. It's just something a bit different. It's always nice to get a new crop. I know when we got FS17 it was soybean and the cover crop were new. Um, having pigs was new. So this is the next thing. This is the new crop, new machinery, new part of the world. It all stands out. So when I get to the end of the row here, the last thing I want to talk about in our Sugar Beet 101, and there's a lot more to it than this, there's different machinery you can try and, you know, I'm sure I've missed something, I'm sure I'm probably doing something wrong. I'm sure someone will let me know. A bit of re-education. Nothing wrong with that at all. But you may not have seen any of these pieces of machinery used, you may not be sure how to seed, when to seed, where to seed, where to get it from. Um, let's just jump in that and turn the worker off from there. It's just a little bit of a guide, a bit of a help. Now, I just put that last lot on the ground just there. And what I will do, because I don't need that second one, I'll just drop that there, um, is that the silos do not take sugar beet. Sugar beet has to be put onto the ground in a barn, etc., or sold straight away. Or so I thought. However, that is not quite true. What I will do very, very quickly is whiz through here. If you go to one of the uh, grain elevators, and I'm trying to work out the best route to go to this one, I may end up going cross country, past the livestock market. Straw and hay uh, sell point just off to the left there. I forgot that in my first look map tour. So it is there by the livestock market. If I come round to one of the grain elevators that's on the railroad, you can actually tip and store into the grain elevators. Hence the kind of shape and design of this, I think. Which means you don't have to have it laying on the floor if you don't want to. So what I will do is just tip that. I don't think I need to lift it. And there we go, that will store into the grain elevator for collection at a later date or to put onto a train and take to the transport company or whatever you should wish to do with it. However, somebody did say, and I'm going to try, try this now, that the pipe on here was too, no, too low. I don't think it is. Let's try. So, let's have a look in here now. Wheat, barley, canola, sunflower, soybean, corn, potatoes, sugar, wheat. Sugar cane, 9,057 litres. That does work, that's interesting. Ah, I know what it was. The larger trailers, I think the random, just fill it back up again. So I can get that out whenever I want it. Um, the random trailers, I think it was, and some of the higher back trailers don't fit underneath the, um, the loading pipe here. These will, but I don't think they will. Um, so again, that'll be a case of finding a trailer that works for you. I think most people are likely to put it into the grain elevators and then use the train. However, it does mean there are three locations around the map where you can store sugarcane. And I'm pretty sure some of the modded silos will probably be adjusted if they haven't already been to take sugarcane um, if you want to add a modded silo in. But there we go. That's it. Like I say, it's not in-depth on each, each piece of equipment. Like I normally do as a new mod comes out, I might do a guide to on that particular piece of equipment. This is a more generic sugarcane as a whole from seeding, or from filling the seeders, to seeding, to harvesting, 
Um, obviously, the little montage at the start was to, uh, or the time lapse, sorry, was allow you to see that grow and the stages of growth. That was highly sped up to make life a lot easier. And that's it. That's sugarcane. I'll now get three crops out of that. I've done one, the second will grow, I'll do that, the third will grow, I'll do that, then I will have to cultivate um, and fertilise and prepare the ground for the next crop to go in. But I think that's pretty good. Um, it's a new crop, it's something different, it's interesting. And that's it. That's it from me. There are lots of other bits of equipment in this new pack, but they are not necessarily related to the oh i know what i didn't do hang on hang on a moment before i go finishing off bear with me the random trailers that was the thing i walked past said look these are random trailers said they come from brazil but didn't say anything else about them so let's just jump into here the last thing the random trailers are obviously the larger capacity trailer units which you can have on the expansion pack just hooked up to the second one the two available are the standard fifth wheel hookup and then also the trailed one the trailed one is perfect if you're going to be using tractors to hook up Let's hook that up. which gives me a bit of a road train very very nice indeed but these also are something a bit different something nice something has got a bit of a trick up its sleeve and I like this this doesn't tip to the back, doesn't have a grain door. This does this. And that is epic. That looks, it's just brilliant. Such a cool thing. It's amazing that these things exist in the real world. It's, I'm looking at that thinking, well, when that tips up, how does that not tip over? That must be counterbalanced so heavily. Or weights that shift, or I don't know, but it's amazing. Same with that one. And there you go. Finishing on that small but significant note, I think you'll find the random trailers and the awesome tip function. I think that's pretty much it for sugarcane. These will take large, large bulk quantities of sugarcane. With a high enough horsepower tractor unit, you can probably pull multiple ones of these, three or four, I don't know. A big old road train, whatever you fancy doing. My cedar has just run out of seed, but actually on one um, uh, planter full that's actually covered a fair bit of ground considering the size of the field so that's not bad at all anyway back to where I was a couple of minutes ago um, I hope you found this useful interesting informative helpful in some way um, if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share the video then please be my guest Whatever you should choose to do, thanks for watching.